Hey, story time. Okay, so my mom had about 25,000 in credit card debt. She had eight credit cards that were maxed out and her credit score was like somewhere around 650. She made her payments on time every month, but still eight credit cards, $1,600 a month. And at the end of 12 months, she's like, I'm not even making a dent. In fact, I haven't used the cards and I owe more than when I started because I'm not even making the minimum interest payment each month. So she's renting her debt. That's basically what it is. So she goes over to Lending Club. I tell her, go there, apply for a loan for the $25,000. They approve her on a three-year loan, $850 a month. Well, she's used to making $1,600. So instead of three years to pay off that debt, it was going to cut her term in half to a year and a half. Well, 30 days after she paid all her credit cards off, right, didn't close them, but her credit score went up 100 points. So she went and got cheaper car insurance, cheaper home insurance, added that to the installment loan, debt-free nine months. Debt free. Nine. So here's how debt pinball works. First thing, I took the woman's credit cards, all five of them, and listed out the, the credit card balance and the minimum payment she's making on each one of these credit cards. Now each one of these, the credit card individual limit for each of these cards is almost maxed out. Her credit score is suffering. She's making her payments on time, but doesn't ever feel like she's making her payments uh, towards actually paying it off and just renting her debt. Well, it totals up to 30,000 credit card balance uh, total and a 752 monthly payment that is a minimum payment. So it's gonna take her about 83 months to pay off that loan if she keeps making that payment. And over that time, 31,000 in interest will be charged. Now, if she gets, oh, goes over to Lending Club or Payoff.com to get an installment loan, well, Payoff.com offered her a $30,000 loan, a five-year loan, at 11% interest rate with a 654 payment every month. And over that five years, she pays about 9,100 in interest, not 31,000 in interest. And she's on a plan to pay it off. 30 days after her loan, and her credit card balances are paid in full, her credit score goes from 680 to 780. Then she's able to take that higher credit score and get cheaper car insurance, refinance her car, and get cheaper home insurance. She takes the $300, and moves it up to the loan that she's paying to pay off each month. So 654 now, you add 300 to that, she's got 954 a month going towards that loan. And that means instead of five years, she pays the loan off in 38 months. After 38 months, she has $954 a month to be applied to her remaining debt. And she's on her way to being debt free. Okay, should you do one of those transfers over to another credit card with a 0% interest or do a personal installment loan to pay off your debt? Let's look at about a $5,000 balance. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add the balance transfer fee. Let's just say it's 3% in this case for this credit card. You owe 5150. The minimum payment required by that bank is gonna be about 2% of the balance. So let's say it's about $103 a month. You keep making this payment, that looks good. But after 12 months, now you owe 3914. And there's this introductory period for this time frame of having a 0% interest. It's usually like 12 months. So if you didn't make the 450 payment a month, okay, then you didn't pay it off in the time frame, now you owe 3914. The introductory uh, rate is over, and uh, if you were late during that time frame, that APR could kick in a lot faster. Over that monthly uh, time frame, if you only make the minimum payment from there, it's gonna take you that much time to pay it off, and you're gonna pay that much interest over that. Okay, part two, should we do a personal installment loan or a 0% balance transfer over to another credit card? One good thing about a personal installment loan is it doesn't impact your credit score the same way as a credit card does. So you're gonna see your credit score improve just right off the bat paying off a credit card with an installment loan. It's a fixed rate term. It's not renting your debt. It's got a term to it. It's either a three year usually or five year term. Even if the interest rate was crazy, like 25% versus a 0%, the 0% way, okay, paying this minimum payment, getting kind of stuck into this higher APR potentially that costs you 6,800 over this time frame versus doing a three year term. It's got a high interest rate maybe, maybe, but it's 220 a month for three years to get that paid off. Or if you want to pay it off in two years, 290 a month. The difference in interest, way different from 6806. Okay, so a lot higher interest, but a better plan.
Are housing unaffordable in this country? Cars. Yep, cars. Cars make our housing unaffordable. I'll tell you why. Because if so much of your budget wasn't eaten up by your car payment at a 28% interest rate because you had to get the car because you had to get the kids to school, right? You had to get to work so you could make money to pay the daycare to get the kids, right? So yeah, yeah, big deal. And debt to income ratio is debt to income ratio what I know does debt to income have anything to do with your credit report no does debt to income have anything to do with your credit score no does debt to income have something to do with getting a mortgage yes your credit report contains your debt usually your car payment house payment, minimum payments for your credit cards. And we need that for you to be able to qualify for a house. I gotta know what your minimum payments are on your credit cards, your car loan, your student loans, so that I can figure out what the debt is. But your income, not on your credit report and not part of your credit score at all. Now, when you go to get a mortgage, I'm gonna look at that debt, the monthly payments, I'm gonna add all that up to figure out what your debt to income ratio is. calls me off TikTok and says, I want to buy this house in Sacramento. My credit's pretty good. All my bills are paid on time. I have about a 697. Should I try to raise my score? I want to make an offer on this house. It's 400,000. I'm going to put 5% down. Check this out. Pretty house. Sacramento, 399. 697 credit score. All bills paid on time. Just a lot of balances on credit cards that are kind of high. They're higher than 10%. So he goes over to Lending Club and he gets himself a loan to consolidate the credit cards, pay them all together. And now he's got a $25,000 loan. Credit score went up just from that alone, but now he's gonna use that money to pay down these credit cards. And now all the balances are paid and the score could be higher if he had a $20 balance on a credit card. Just 20 bucks, but now the score's higher and now that saves him $400 a month. pockets pockets not just an address but I love those too but pockets like little digital piggy banks that's what I call them I call them pockets uh, little places that I have money stashed so as a single mom I always kind of feel confident that I got a little money somewhere well I set up all these little rules at the beginning of the year for these different accounts and over the year I've saved 20,000 I want to show you a few different apps that have really helped me save money First, you gotta start rewarding your behavior of saving. So every time you're gonna save a dollar or you go and buy a discounted gift card to a restaurant you were gonna go to, you take the difference, the amount that you saved, you go to the Tip Yourself app and you tip yourself that difference. Keep track of your saving. The Digit and Acorns app are a couple others you wanna try. Digit will take a little tiny withdrawal out of your bank account at the end of the day, maybe have a couple dollars, move it over into a little side account. You won't believe how fast that adds up. Acorns rounds up your change on every debit charge you make. 